Following the physical exam comes the evaluation of the perineum and the pelvic floor. This part of the evaluation has four steps. First the preparation, which I will demonstrate right away. Then the three sections of the evaluation itself. The perineal assessment, the vaginal assessment, and the anal assessment. To start the first part of the evaluation, I will begin with the perineal assessment. It has four steps. An overall observation of the perineal anatomy, then an assessment of sensation, pain, and tone. The next step is to perform the neurological tests, and the last step is to observe the pelvic floor at work, the stress tests. The vestibule is the area just around the vaginal opening, inside the labial menorrhea, at the level of the hymenal remnants. Gently press with the side of a cotton swab around the vaginal opening. Think of it as a clock face, start at 3 o'clock and go around to 9 o'clock. Press the Q-tip firmly but gently, all the way around the posterior half of the vestibule, as this is the area in which pain is usually provoked in women with vestibulodynia. Now we move on to the second part of the pelvic floor assessment, the vaginal assessment. I'll start by giving you an overview of the steps. The first step is to insert the fingers into the vagina. Then I will demonstrate how to assess the tone of the pelvic floor muscles, how to assess for pain, tension, and trigger points, how to assess the pelvic floor muscles' ability to contract and relax, their response to stress, and lastly, how to assess for prolapse. So you have assessed for muscle tone, tension, trigger points, and pain. You will next assess the muscle activity using Joe Laycock's PERFECT scheme. So PERFECT is an acronym that stands for P for power, E for endurance, R for repetition, F for fast, E for elevation, C for co-contraction, and last, T for timing with a cough. These are all of the elements that are evaluated with the Laycock scheme, and I will demonstrate each of them with the volunteer. I will now explain the last section of the pelvic floor evaluation, the anal assessment. This part of the assessment also includes several steps. The assessment of sensation, the assessment of tone, the ability to contract and to relax, assessing for prolapse, and in addition, the assessment of a posterior bony structure, the coccyx, which are similar to the steps involved in the other two parts of the evaluation. Then I will insert my finger a little deeper into the anal canal, and right away I will come to another muscle, the puborectalis. This muscle maintains the anal rectal angle, and I will be able to feel this angle, which is usually between 40 degrees and 60 degrees. I will assess the angle, then I will evaluate the tone and contractility of the puborectalis.